Welcome to Hawkett Podcast. Today's guest is Stake, a passionate crafter, mother, and wife who hates all things government. How's it going? It's fine. Can you? Okay. Sorry. That sounded very un. Are you tired? No, I'm not tired. I'm not tired. I'm. I. It's a little too early for me. I'll say that it's too early. It's only too early. Nine. It's only nine in the morning here in California. Yeah. So. And I usually, here's my thing. I've noticed what I do with my intros. I'm like rushing to do them. So I was like, I'm going to take my time to do this one properly. So people yeah, can understand okay. what I'm saying. Oh, you're not excited to talk to me? I am excited to talk to you. Well, then act excited, man. How the fuck are you doing, steak? I'm here. <laughs> I'm on crack and shit. Let's do this. Clip that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, somebody's going to put that, put that in your intro. Just random, pick, like random, random little clips of me saying stupid shit just i'm on crack and shit i should do that i need to i need to it'd be it'd be funny (laughs) edit it like one of my mortal Kombat videos oh i wanted to talk okay let's talk about that first i'm surprised no one's done an edit for you like replace the woman's face with your face and like had it like running did you see me um edit it into to sub-zero i have I have seen that. Yeah, see, that's me. Uh, But it's going to get better. Like, I'm really nervous about being on camera. Like, and I don't like to put myself out there like that. Like, I guess I I don't know. I I don't I don't take myself too seriously, but I just don't like being a doofus on the Internet. Well, that's not true. We know that's a fucking lie. But like physically being a doofus on the Internet. I don't have a problem like, you know, being a retard on the Internet. But when I put my face on it, I'm like, "Eh." I'm a little apprehensive. I'm so I'm with, I'm with you. I'm the, I'm the same way. I've been doing but, my show for four years now. I still am uncomfortable showing my face to the public. I will drop a little, a little thing though, because people don't know who the next character is going to be. I see. And I'm gonna. I'll say it'll be. I, I don't. Hmm. Oh, no, maybe, no. Maybe I won't say. It. I won't say it. It'll just be a surprise. Yeah, that'll be that'll be better to do. Yeah, I'll make it a surprise. I actually texted my friend that does my editing and be like, "Are you in the mood to edit soon?" Because we have day one sixty nine coming up, and then we have uh, day one eighty three, which is the halfway point. So you're gonna do it for? Are you gonna share that video for the whole year until twenty twenty four ends? That's what I'm planning on, and um, because it's a leap year, everybody gets an extra day. I don't know why it just hap- It just started. I, I thought the video was funny. I just happened to share it on New Year's Day. And then I was like, fuck it, let's do it again. And I did. And then I just kept going. And then it's, I think it's just going to be progressively weirder and more twisted as the year goes. But that's kind of how things are now. And thankfully, I have a an internet friend that is like, like really enjoys watching me be retarded online. And so he's like my financial backer. And he like gives me money so I can do costumes and get my green screen. Cause I'm like, I don't want to be out money. Cause I'm not making money doing this. Like I'm still, even though he gives me money, like once every quarter, like I still am losing money on this. And I'm like, I don't want to lose money on it because it's just a stupid internet thing. Are you going to dress up? Are you going to dress up as one of the Mortal Kombat characters for Halloween this year? Uh, well, I will have a lot of costumes. I'll say that I like, I could probably outfit my whole family in Mortal Kombat costumes, by the time you this re- is done. You, you, you should recreate that video live with your family or just you by yourself. Oh, God, no. No, I look way too much like that lady for that to happen. Uh-uh, not happening. No. <laughs> <laughs> so now t- tell us your origin story. Where are you from, Sig? Uh, I'm from Kansas, born and raised. I haven't left. Don't have any intentions of leaving. I like it here. I'm in a small town. It's fairly quiet. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't want to go like I would move to more land if we could afford it. But that that dream of ours is kind of dead at the moment right now. Um, like we we couldn't help. We probably couldn't even afford our house right now if we tried. Like, I, I don't know if you ever saw that kind of survey I put out on Twitter about like going off the value of your house now, would you be able to afford to buy it today? And um, most people said no. 
Um, you know, cause once you include interest rates and all of that, like I would, my house payment would be three times what it is right now for the same house, which is absolutely ridiculous because it's just a little shitty ranch on a quarter acre. Mm -hmm. Like it's nothing right, but it's ours. So we just make it, we make it work, you know? That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I come, I'm from California. I I cannot wait to move out. I still love my parents, but I am looking forward to the day I move out of California. I'm over the state completely. Like, well, the problem is, is it's such a pretty state. It, you know, it is pretty. They, they just it destroyed it because you guys have like everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like yeah, you guys, you have like almost all the uh, scenery types that you could want. You know, you got your forests and your beaches, and I think you got some mountains out that way. Yeah, we do. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I live. If you I, really... live I live like I don't know if those uh, will be count as mountains, but we have west uh, West Hills. I think that's considered like the canyons. I don't think that's really the mountains. Which is, it's more than Kansas has, right? If you want flat, then you come to Kansas. Sorry, I'm putting my computer up. Um, but we don't have, oh, well, we have Mount Sunflower, which is the tallest point in Kansas, but it's only like a thousand feet or something. It's not very big. I don't know. Somebody fact check me on that one because I have no idea how big it is. I think it's slowly eroding. I think somebody just got bored one day and started throwing dirt in a pile. And then they were like, look, it's a mountain now. <laughs> well, you're lucky to live in like in a small town. I'm from the suburb of California. So it's like, there's nothing to do here anymore. Like everything, <laughs> like everything's closed down. We still have a mall and that mall's like, I don't know how that's still surviving after COVID, but, but it's like, it's freaking expensive. And they have like this high end uh, type of stores like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all that. High, oh. high, like, yeah. Yeah, who cares about high end? I just, I used to, I used to be. I, don't know. I, I, I used buy my to be a shit on discount. Like I don't spend full price on anything. I don't think it's worth it to spend a thousand dollars on a dress. I'm, um, I'm with you. I on don't that. like I, famous people anymore. Like I don't give a shit about anybody I'm, except for me and mine. I'm with you. I'm the same way. Yeah, I used to be like, oh, I'm gonna get like the latest Gucci wallet, like what men, you know, what men get, like high higher design stuff mm. but as i'm getting older like that's just like a rip off and if you look at where everything's made they're all made from the same company they just throw their label on uh, on that product yep well I, I think now i think back in the day it wasn't necessarily the case you know when you had like you know italian leather it was made in italy right but now it's all made with italian leather in china like why am i going to pay 300 dollars for a coach bag when i could probably get another leather bag for similar pricing for, or I mean, for like a hundred bucks versus, you know, whatever. So can I, I'm going to smoke just FYI. You, you can go ahead you can do anything you want. I don't mind. I'm going to do some crack. No. <laughs> yeah. They've closed. They've closed. It's like the last, since 2016, like living here now has become very unsafe. I just see helicopters flying over my house for like the last two days. Like what the fuck is going on in my, on, in my area nowadays? There's like uh, police helicopters. Every few days, like we didn't ever, I never used to see this in like around like 2016. Like just something got worse in like the last like five years or more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just complete societal breakdown. But it's like on this really, it's really bizarre. I mean, and people talk about a controlled collapse, and it and it is because it's so goddamn slow. <laughs> and I'm so tired. Like I'm tired. I don't. One, I don't want to play this game anymore. I'm just done. But people aren't uncomfortable enough to do anything. Um, people aren't principled enough to do anything. Um, they're not willing to give up anything to save what's more important, basically. Um, it just it's like during like COVID, like my husband almost lost his job because he didn't get vaccinated. And we had to have a discussion. And I was like, why the fuck do we even need to have this conversation? But about what would happen if he lost his job? Because he was like, maybe I should just get it, you know, so I don't lose my job. And I was like, um, no, <laughs> because I'd rather have, I'd rather be homeless than have a dead husband, right? Um, and I was just like, I'm not going to play their game. I'm not going to do it. And so we had to come up with a plan about what we would do because especially at that time, there wasn't 
really any jobs that he would be able to take with his skill set, right? And especially ones that wouldn't pay the same amount of money. Like I would have to get a job, which would pull our son out of homeschooling and it would just completely upend our lives. So we just said, fuck it, we'll sell the house. We have a really nice camper. So, but which is part, it's part of it. Like we have, you know, bug out plans, things like that, but that was our backup. And I always kind of knew it. I was like, we need a nice enough camper that I can live in it if I have to, just because if whatever happens. So our plan was, you know, just stay, you know, putting, going to, you know, my, probably his parents' property because they have more land and just living in the camper on their property. And then our son can stay in the house, right? And we can still keep doing our homeschool shit. And it would suck, but it would be better than nothing, right? And I would still have my husband. So that's where we were on that. And thankfully, um, nothing happened with that. But, you know, it was just like, I, I just was made me so fucking mad. I'm not so mad anymore, though. Like, I was really mad there for a few years because I think everybody just feels, you know, impotent, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what can you do? Because you're just one person and it's not going to work. You can't do anything unless you have a large group of people that are willing to stand up and say, fuck, you know, and um, basically because you're going against the government, be willing to lose your life. Like, who's willing to do that? Um, But we need to do something because our children are suffering and their lives are going to continue to suffer. And what kind of a world are we going to leave for them? We're going to leave nothing for them. Yeah. Yeah. We need to, and we, so we need to be building strong children to make sure that I hate having the conversation with my son about what's going on. Like he's almost 10 and, you know, you want your kids to be able to be kids and to stay innocent, but with what's happening, you have to be a little truthful. You can't hide it from them right forever. And then just have it come down on them like a ton of bricks. Like we're seeing that with the boomers right now where the whole facade is crumbling around them and they're not handling it very well um, that their whole lives have been a lie. And I just, I, I don't know. Like, so I, I don't tell them everything. I told them, I'm like, I'm not going to tell you everything that's going on. Cause you're not old enough to understand it. And I don't want you to have to deal with that right now, but I do tell them some things that there's something going on. They're trying to collapse things on purpose, but we don't need to be scared about it because we're prepared for it. And I'm like, I'm not scared. Your dad's not scared, right? Like we were ready um, if something happens. And so we can continue to try to enjoy our lives as much as possible while still doing all the crap that we have to do every day just to maintain it. Cause it is a lot more work, mm-hmm. um, you know? And that was the thing is I think we got lost to convenience and we lost all of our skills um, when it comes to survival. Um, but it's almost, I think, to, we're to the point where we need something like that. We're too, um, be- we're too dependent on technology. And I've noticed that a lot of people are dependent on way too much technology and less on hands-on experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we teach him to, to take care of stuff. And he's out with him cutting firewood and, you know, building things and learning how to use tools properly. And just basic things like that. Like, what was it? Who's that fucking dude from um, Rishi Sunak or whatever the fuck his name is from the UK? Like, I don't know if he was trolling people or not, but did you see that video where he was like hammering something with like, he had like a ball peen hammer and he was like holding it sideways instead of on the head of the hammer. I, I haven't seen that video. It's fucking embarrassing. Okay. Like I don't even have a hammer down. I actually do have a hammer down here, but it's somewhere. I don't know. Um, but yeah, instead of having it, you know, holding it up and down like a normal hammer, he was holding it sideways and trying to hit something. And I'm like, anybody that's seen any sort of movie, whatever with somebody, but like, you know, so how, how fucking far gone are you that you don't even know how to hold a hammer? Or just even the basic function of how a hammer works, right? Like it's one thing to not know how to swing a hammer physically, right? A lot of people choke up on it or whatever. And, but this, this was completely beyond. It's like, so you're either fucking trolling, which is a dick move because you're just telling people I'm better than you. I don't need to know this, right? Fuck you for doing your, you know, you plebs with your fucking manual labor or he really doesn't know. And you're like, how far 
gone are you that you have never won, never had to use a hammer, never seen anybody use a hammer? You've never seen anybody build anything. That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. He anyway. Probably, he, he probably was trolling them to see what the, the people on Twitter's reaction would be. I don't, yeah, but what? Uh, why? What would be the purpose except just to say, fuck you, your job is stupid. That and to, I don't, I don't and know. That and to get clicks. Because we've seen a lot of these right and left uh, in, right wing influencers do that a lot. Like this talk about random topics that have no solutions to what they're trying to say. Yeah, but he's prime minister though, right? It's different. It's not. Yeah, but he's probably. Fucking... Gonna, yeah, but he's probably gonna have like like people that he knows that can help him out doing all the like like. That's true. I just I don't understand what he would stuff. get. Like you would think that you would want people to like you, right? So they vote for you again. But why would he want to irritate people? It's almost like he's like just saying, fuck you. There's nothing you can do about me being prime minister. So I'm going to do what I want. That's pretty much you know what, what I mean. It's just pretty like much what he's move. trying to do. Like he, he, he doesn't care. He's still going to get paid whatever amount of money he's going to make becoming the prime minister. So he's like, I'm just going to make a fool out of myself. But people who don't support me are just going to give me the free press. That's probably why he did it. I guess. I don't know. Fuck that guy. <laughs> so now what was your upbringing like for you? Um, it wasn't bad. Like I had some some trauma in my childhood that wasn't because of my parents. So my my home life wasn't terrible. I really don't have a lot of complaints about my home life. I mean, compared to some people, it was pretty easy. Um you know, like I said, I got some trauma shit that I'm dealing with, but that's not their fault necessarily. So, um, yeah, nothing, nothing too exciting or crazy. We went on vacations, you know, both parents worked. Um, I think my mom wished she would have stayed home and I kind of wish she would have too, because then that bad thing wouldn't have happened to me, but because they're boomers, you know, their whole thing was, we, you know, we need to give a better life for our children than we had kind of thing. And so, you know, it was very, we probably would have been fine on one income. We wouldn't have had a ton of money, but would we have known, you know, like there's a story, I can't remember who it's from, but somebody was like, we spent like a whole, somebody told, said once they're like, we spent a whole year like camping in the woods and like we would fish for our dinner and stuff. And because I guess their dad lost his job and they're like, we didn't even know, like it was just part of our childhood. Like they didn't have bad memories about it. And so it's like, does, does the money really matter at this point? Does money matter? I mean, our money's worth what? 31% less than it was five fucking years ago. Mm -hmm. No money doesn't matter. Time matters. People matter. And that's it. Like, it's nice to have money to maintain a lifestyle, but what's at what cost, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I keep, I agree. I keep, with you. I, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, I agree about the money. As I'm like getting older and I was like, yeah, this money, do I really care for money? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll make, I'll make money off of my podcast, but truthfully, I don't care for the money that I get half of the money. If I do make it, it's going to get donated to animal shelters. That's like my main goal with my show. The money I make will go to them instead of me putting in my pocket. Yeah. I have this, um, behind my phone case here that I'm on right now, so I can't pull it out. I have a fortune from a fortune cookie that I've had there for God, probably 10 years now. And it just says sometimes money costs too much. And that just really fucking hit one day. And I was like, Oh my God. And it doesn't seem like it says a lot, but it does. And I'm like, it, you know, it was like with the job and, and the vaccine, like, what is it worth? That's too much of a cost just to have a steady income of this amount, right? Like he could find another job, but probably only for half of what he's making now. Cause he's got almost 20 years in his company now. And it's just, it's not, it's not a lot of, most of it's not worth it anymore. I don't shop really. Like I'll buy, a, I'll, I'll make t-shirts and stuff, you know, like if I want a t-shirt, I'll probably just make it for myself. Um, you know, I don't carry fancy things. I have a very, very few bougie things that I do like, like I have a face cream that is one of my most bougie purchases ever. I spent like $60 on this jar of face cream and I felt bad about it, but it makes my skin feel like a baby's bottom and I smell like honey and I love it. 
And um, so that's one of my splurges is a $60 jar of face cream. Like, I don't even like going out to eat anymore because I'm like, the food is all mid. And I'm not spending it. And if you really go behind the like the counter and see how they make the food, you'll be like, uh uh-uh, uh, I don't want to even eat at a restaurant anymore, regardless. Yeah. It's disgusting. My dad used to work at a KFC when before he started, before he uh, uh, did his own business. And he was mm-hmm. like, the things he saw behind the kitchen when he used at KFC was disgusting. He's like, that's why he doesn't eat from outside anymore. I mean, we used to eat a lot when we were kids. We used to eat McDonald's, all the nasty fried foods, mm. but not anymore. I mean, I may have it like occasionally if my mom doesn't cook, but we don't, we don't eat. Your all- mom still cooks your dinners. That's yeah. cute. Well, my sister still lives with me. So it's me, my sister and my dad. She cooks for all three of us. So Aww. everybody's home. How old are you? I'm 32. Okay. So why haven't you moved out? Just too expensive? Yeah. Or you like... Or is it like a, like, I don't know if how, like, if, if your family's like traditional or we're, whatever we're traditional. with stuff we're, like that. Or traditional. We're, so, so you kind of don't move out till you get married kind of thing? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I could move out, but I got to do my research. I want to state I want to move to. And it's yeah. a long process. Yeah. It's, and right now it's almost fucking impossible. I mean, we're back to, to the eighties when it comes to housing and um i just i i don't know what's gonna happen like i called the commercial real estate crisis like at the beginning of covid i could just see it happening like that was the one thing that i was like i figured out for myself and i was really proud of myself for of course if you have half a brain cell you could probably figure it out too but then they started closing businesses and i lost my business and i was like we're gonna have a serious issue on our hands because we spent decades now building up this commercial you know retail empire um and not just retail but everything right mm-hmm. and our massive amount of sprawl that we have with commercial buildings and now they're just like are like the busiest the, in the in the city that's closest to me because that's where I have to go to get groceries and stuff um on the busiest street you know the most popular real you know commercial street or whatever like it used to be damn near impossible to get business space because it would lease so quickly now there's a dozen empty buildings just sitting there and so you can see it happening i mean and but they're still building other buildings which is weird to me and i'm like they must have had plans for this years ago and have you noticed i don't know if it's around your area but i noticed here that they're making a lot more uh, apartment complexes Yes. Yes, they are. Um, I haven't seen any new ones being built in a while, but there are a lot of newer um, complexes. I just, I don't know. And not in my town, right? Like we haven't done any expanding, thankfully. Um, but the problem is, is the cities are getting too close, you know? And uh, so I, I don't know, man. I just, shit fucking sucks. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we're supposed to, in the next, like, I think next year or year after, we're supposed to have, like, the Rams come over, take over an Anthem building we have, and they're going to turn it into a, a training facility. I'm like, that's wonderful. They're going to just destroy the city, the surrounding area, and, like, the area I live even more. We're going to have a lot more problem with crimes and homeless people. And we kind of already have, but it's going to get worse once they come into town. I, I have noticed the homeless situation has gotten worse. Um, and it's, and grifters, um, I posted a video on Twitter, I don't know, probably months ago at this point, but, um, there were some streamers that were talking about the, uh, the issue with these people and like they're playing violins and stuff with like speakers. Have you seen those guys? Mm-mm. Okay. So, so there's these people that'll go around with like a fancy violin and a speaker and they'll, they're, they're pretending to play music. And so they'll be like, oh, you know, my kid has cancer. But then you'll notice it's like the same. It's like a group of people like rotating. So I'm like, all of your kids have cancer. I don't think so. And it is it's like because you'll notice because they'll always play. What is that song like? A thousand years or whatever hell that song's called. They always play that song because they're not actually playing. It's just a literal recording of a violin playing with backer music. And it's like. 
people give them money. And I'm like, stop giving them money. They're people just fucking grifting. People are stupid. I've noticed, like, there's one time my dad gave money to a homeless guy. And then later on, he walked away and he went to a gas station and he probably bought smokes. Probably cigarettes with the money my dad gave to him. Like, yeah. And after that, my dad's like, yeah, I'm not giving any more money to them because he saw what happened right in front of him. Yeah, I don't ever give money to people. Um, I'll ask them if they want something to eat. I'll buy food for people. Um, I do it at least probably three, four times a year. Um, you know, but like, I'm not going to give you money, but if you want something to eat, I'll get you something to eat. And then I'll probably give them a couple cigarettes too, just because it's like, dude, you're homeless. You can have a smoke. It's all right. I'll give one to you, <laughs> whatever. Um, and I've... I, I've only had like a few people turn me down, you know, cause I'll see them, you know, outside if I'm like going through a drive, I don't really go through drive throughs anymore, but when I used to, I'd be like, Hey, you want me to grab you something when I'm going through? And you know, if they say no, I'm like, fine, then you must not be that hungry. Or I'll go to the store and get like, um, you know, like <sighs> shelf stable food mm -hmm, for them, mm -hmm. you know, like, like, <sighs> what the fuck like, like power bars but not power bar you know that kind of thing uh -huh. um just you know because it's like yeah you can get 12 cheeseburgers but you can't eat them all right now so and you don't have it's not like you have a fridge to keep them in so i try to get them um food that will last them a little bit longer if they need it or i'll buy a bag of food for their dog or something you know just a cheap walmart bag of food but you know i care about your dog <laughs> I, care more, I care more for animals than people to be honest with you i'd rather give them i food. do too i'd rather give them, them food and like take care of them and humans i don't know why i mean i know i have parents but i'll take care of them but i'm more like i surround myself more, more with animals than uh like humans i don't know it's just like a thing with me especially now because people are acting like animals um <laughs> and i just i don't know uh I don't know nothing. So I'm just. <laughs> so now what was your favorite memory with your family when you went on your trips and what kind of trips did you go on? With oh my God. We, we went to, I, we used to be big Disney people. Ooh. Um, I've been to Disney world like seven times or something, maybe wow. six, six or seven times. I lost count. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, they're great trips, but I didn't need them. Right. And now I hate Disney. Me too. I'm with and you. And so those memories are almost bittersweet at this point. Cause I'm like, and then, you know what they do to children in Hollywood. And it's like, fuck, man, I hate that my parents spent so much money doing that. Um, cause we went in, uh, around in December of 2019. Um, cause I, the last time we had gone to Disney World, I told my husband because we were we were talking about starting a family. And so I was like, OK, if we have a kid on their fifth birthday, we're going to surprise them to a trip for a trip to Disney. And we made that happen. Right. Like we saved a bunch of money because it's like a thousand dollars plus a person to go to Disney. Like it's not fucking cheap. Mm -hmm. So I saved, you know, saved our pennies forever. And, you know, when he turned five, we surprised him with a trip to Disney. And thankfully that was in December of 2019, right before everything got fucked. So we got to experience it before everything was terrible. Um, but I told him, I'm like, we're never coming back here. Like he, it's, it's not going to happen. And he doesn't really, my son really doesn't care too much, <laughs> which That's is good. good right. Good. And he, he's not materialistic at all. He doesn't really ask for things. The most recent thing he asked me for was a lock picking set. And I was like, fucking based. All right, I'll buy you a lock picking set. Um, so that's the kind of stuff he wants, you know, and we he's old enough now and we got him, we went on a camping trip last month and uh, the husband and I decided that it was time to get him his own pocket knife, right? Because he's almost 10. And I'm like, well, we think he's mature enough now. He can handle it. So we got him a little Swiss army knife just for him. And oh my God, he's so proud of that thing. Like he carries it everywhere, shows everybody. He's like, look what I got. Yeah, that's and I'm like, well, you got to be careful. That's but... a good thing to not have. Not, uh, kids nowadays need to have something like that because you can't trust adults, like random strangers. No, well, I used to carry a knife when I was a kid. Like, I'm sure kids have always carried knives. You know what I mean? Just even I just never, a little I never pocket. I never carried any knives. What? Why not? You should. 
I know. I like I don't. Leave, I don't leave the house without a gun. Well, you have and a knife. Well, you have better laws and another gun. You have better laws in Kansas. We don't. We have stupid ass gun laws in California. I don't care about gun laws. You're good. I don't. You need, shouldn't either. I don't either. You shouldn't either. I, I don't either. Yeah, you but shouldn't. I, I don't know the whole like gun thing. So someone needs to like teach me <laughs> the basics of guns. I never got. Okay, to- I know I have some mutes in California. Would somebody help a meet out for the love of God? Take him shooting or something. Yeah, I don't know. We, that, we need I, we I need to make him more based. California. I don't know that many people in California who are like into guns. Oh, there's a lot. They just don't talk about it because they don't want to get in trouble for it, right? Mm-hmm. And it it does limit their their ability to have certain guns. Um, but yeah, I have. Yeah, so speaking of Disneyland, what's up with the adults nowadays going there and like acting like they're like five year olds? They're like act like adults. I've seen videos on TikToks about about the. the did you see that fat woman eating? I did I did? Like I, I'm I fat, to, right? Like I had to like, move up. I had to move up. Like I can't watch this shit. Like in the '80s, I would have been considered comically fat, right? Like I would have been the disgusting, obese friend. Now, I don't look that bad by comparison. I'm like I'm in I'm in my my hot fat girl arc right now because compared to those behemoths, I'm all right, right? So I'm like I'm just gonna soak this up and take this in. And uh, it's so it's, uh, you know, I'm just going to toot my own horn a little bit, but it's, it it's these perpetual, um, they've, we have created an entire generation of perpetual emotionally, emotional children. Nobody can handle anything difficult. Um, if you say something they don't like, they put their hands over their ears and scream at you. Um, they don't know how to process feelings at all because everybody held their hand through everything and they're told, no, you're special and valid and everything you say is right and true. Um, and yeah, go ahead and keep eating because it makes you feel good, right? It's everything makes you feel good. And so now we have these giant people stinking up everything. I'm sorry. If you're really big, you smell. I, I can't, I can't. If you're like, a, like, like I would say 300 pounds is probably my line. Like, Luke, stop, stop. If you can't fit into a seat, if your car cries when you get into it, please lose some weight. You're gross and nobody likes it. My God, I just, I can't. I have no patience for extremely fat people anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even like myself being this big, but. I used I used to be big. I eat once a day and I still can't lose any more weight. So I'm like, all right, this is where I gotta quit then, I guess. And I just hold it here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to be I used to be really, really fat as well. I used to be 180 at one time. If I ever shared my old photos, I used to be very chubby. But how tall are you? I'm five five. I used to be 180. Now I'm like one fifth like one fifty. Okay, that makes a little more sense because I'm like, I haven't been 180 and I don't even know how long. Like this, what one eighty was like when I was in high school. Not probably when I got married. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't think I've been one eighty in like fifteen years, if not more than that. Like I'm over two hundred. I'm not gonna tell anybody, but like I'm also five nine, and I I have a lot of muscle, so I'm just stockily built. But yeah, yeah. No, I'm still fat. I know I'm fat. I'm working on myself to like get a like proper man body. Like people. A proper man body. <laughs> yeah. I've always Just been. I, here's the thing. I work never it talk, out, man. I never talk about on a show, but I've been like up and down with my weight a lot. Ever since I got like diagnosed with colitis, it like hit me really bad with the weight. It went like a roller coaster, like up, mm-hmm. down, up, down, up, down. So finally, like, I think last year I was like, I need to find a trainer and start like getting better in shape. And it's already been gonna, I think it's already one year. And I've seen like a progress of like my shoulders getting more like bigger and my arms it's I getting more like tone it's taking time but I notice a difference yeah hell even just just doing shit out in the yard like I notice um I I don't get as hungry when I'm you know just doing a little bit of manual labor like I I literally only work out once a week um 
sorry. Um, like when I go skating, like that's the only like time I actually make time to work out. Other than that, it's, you know, doing stuff in the yard. Um, but I also only eat once a day. So like I said, I am losing weight again. Cause I did, I gained like 15 pounds over the holidays. It's all the damn goat cheese and delicious things that I cook. I can't help it. What things do you cook? What things do you like? To cook? Everything. Oh my God. Everything. Um, I'm actually, your, what's your favorite dish just to make? Steak. No, there's, there's, there's a few things. Um, I like to make bread now. I'm kind of into that. I don't really buy bread anymore. Like if you look at my tweets, um, yeah, the last no, like, I, I like the last one. That was, those bread look good. I used to my my bread burger bread. buns. Yeah, I made burger buns because we had hamburgers for dinner last night, and um, and yeah, it turned out really good. Um, I am working on, I have pl well plans to start a cookbook. I'm kind of getting my ducks in a row to do that. Um. Because, you know, it's, I'm poor and can't, I don't like to go out to eat. So um, I just, if I want to try to make it, I'll just make it, right? It doesn't matter, I guess, what country the dish is from or wherever, right? Like I've made tamales. I love um, chicken tikka masala. Um, Naan's really easy to make. And sometimes I like just making it and just to eat with something else because it's fucking delicious. Mm. Um you know, what was it last week? I made beef and broccoli and I make rangoons, which is so I'll put like all that kind of stuff in my soups. Right. Um, I'm, I'm really good at making a meal out of nothing. Like if you just give me a fridge of random ingredients, I'll come up with a meal for you. Um, but that was just more out of, that's just like kind of a poverty lesson, right? Like you're like, I can't afford groceries for four more days and I have three people to feed, what am I going to do? You fucking figure it out. Right. So we, we tend to have some weird mishmash meals in our house, but I don't like wasting food. So, um, there's very little waste gotcha. when it comes to food waste in our home. So that's good for us. Mm -hmm. So now tell us about the jobs you had throughout your life and did you enjoy them and did not enjoy them? Oh, I've done everything. Um, I used to be a firefighter and an EMT. Oh, really? Yeah, that was okay. Um, they don't like women, though. So that was, um, it only lasted, what was that? Maybe four years total. Um, I did work at a drag strip doing fire rescue out there. I fucking loved that job. And then they fired us all to hire the local ambulance company. And so they outsourced all of our jobs. Um, but I got to cut people out of race cars and shit. So that was kind of cool. Um, and it actually gave me time because there was a lot of downtime at that job because you literally just sit in an ambulance and wait for somebody to hurt themselves, right? Um, so that gave me the time and the money to start my business. Um, but yeah, I worked a lot of retail when I was younger. Um, my first job was at 13. I worked at a concession stand at a ball diamond for $2 an hour. I actually got fired from that job. Why? <laughs> because... Um, some kids were coming up and asking for free food. And I'm like, no, I'm not giving you any free food. Go away. Well, then they complained to my manager that I wasn't serving them. And, you know, there's always another 13 year old that's willing to take your place for $2 a fucking hour. So I lost that job. And then I went and worked at um, CC's Pizza, actually, for two years from 14 to 16. And um, so I've said hi, welcome to CC's thousands of times. Uh, it's still, it still pops in my brain every once in a while and I get a little PTSD from it. Ugh. And, uh, you know, so then other retail jobs, I was a barista for a few years. Um, I worked at pet stores. I used to know quite a bit about animals. Um, cause some of them, like, especially the chain ones, like you could study and take tests and get certified in different animal, you know, animal husbandry areas through you know through them and then you would actually get a raise mm. so i just was like why wouldn't you do that right so i was making an extra 50 cents an hour over other people because i was certified in everything which you know for 2002 or whatever was a good thing right 50 cents mattered back then <laughs> um then yeah i oh my god i drove a bus a bus driver. like i said i've done everything 
Um, I ran a before and after school program. I used to be in charge of children, which is weird. I know. And yeah. So then I started my business, um, when I was bored sitting on an ambulance working at a racetrack all day, um, I decided to start a, a clothing company and I always told myself I wouldn't work, work retail again, but it was my retail business. So I could tell my, you know, I was in charge and that was going great. I was expanding. Um, I was making tons of money how, how, and it was all, how much money are we talking about? Um, I would go to a show and clear four to $5,000 a weekend. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Um, so, you know, I would, I wouldn't pocket a lot of it because I was, it was only a few years into it. I was still putting that back in a lot of it back into the business, but, um, you know, I was paying my, making my car payment every month, which was nice. Um, and really my whole goal with, with the business was just to make enough because I really wanted to, um, expose my son to everything the world had to offer because it's a giant beautiful place if we actually stop and take a look around at it right and different cultures and things like that and I was like I wanted to take my boys and travel around the world and that was really all the money I needed you know we would just go to a different foreign country every year and he could learn that way and um then you know then COVID happened and because I didn't, um, I had a, I had a website, but I didn't really use it much. My business was more going to the events and going to my customers because it was, you know, it was so a little you, more so you did like um, a niche. Booth. So you did like a booth. Out yeah, of basically. Kitchen. Yeah. Um, I, it was my clothing company and I would travel to events where those kinds of people that like those kinds of clothing, um, would what buy kind of, them. What, what kind of clothing did you make? It was, it was rockabilly clothing. And, um, I did, uh, vintage reproduction i um you know when i like i said i was getting ready to expand like i had bought a bunch of new stuff because i was doing my own clothing labels now and it was gonna i was gonna be a big deal in the rockabilly like i not to toot my own horn but i think i would have been a really big deal um people would have known who i was and like i was having events i was to the point that i was having events call me and ask me to come to their shows right like that's where i was getting to like people i was getting talked about and then COVID happened mm -hmm. and um, my first show was in of the year would have been in April of 20, you know, 2020. Well, March, they started shutting things down and everybody I got kept getting emails and everybody's like, oh, well, we're canceling our event or no, we're rescheduling our event and like four events all rescheduled for Labor Day. And I was like, okay, um, but if all four of these events are rescheduled, for, I would have to pick one, right? So I would make a quarter, if not, you know, because like I said, I was going to be even bigger. So I probably would have made more money that next year because I just kept making more money every show, you know, every year. And it was like, I can't, I can't choose. And then eventually, you know, it came around and they just canceled them all together. Well, then the state was coming after me going, well, we know you're making money. And I'm like, I'm literally not mm -hmm. right. And um, so they were trying to find me thousands of dollars in back sales tax and stuff like that. And so finally I was like, you know, I just got to shut down. So they leave me alone. Right. Cause I didn't owe them anything. I wasn't making anything. Mm -hmm. And so I went through all that and I just had to shut the business down. People go, well, why don't you get back into it? I'm like, I was, just, there's about, no I was just about to ask you that question. Everybody fucking asks that. And it's like one the drive is gone. It's been four fucking years. Right. And everything's gone. Like I've sold things off. Right. I don't have, I didn't just hang on to an entire business's worth of shit for four years. It would cost thousands of dollars from what I started with $150 and an idea would cost me over $10,000 to get started now. And I don't want to do that. Plus my I, I haven't been to a rockabilly event in a long time, but I don't think they're like they used to be. And with how divided everybody is now, like I'm too outspoken now mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. you know, I was like on face. I didn't even have a Twitter account back then. I didn't join a uh, Twitter until like October of 2020. And, um, I just, I, I don't see it happening. I wouldn't be able to keep my mouth shut. Right. And I just, 
my heart's not in anymore and my priorities have changed, right? I don't care about traveling the country anymore. And um, I just want to be home. I do get wanderlust every once in a while because I was, I was driving to eight different States a year. Right. Um, and I was doing it alone. Most of the time, if I was lucky, I might be able to get a family member to come with me, but, um, it it's nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm okay with just making my little, you know, my patches and my t-shirts and selling them to my internet friends and make it a few dollars to, to finance the couple trips I go on a year now. I mean, um, I mean, you can make that into business as well. I don't want to though. Why would I want to file anything with the government? That's stupid. That's true. Fuck them. I take cash up only. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I just, I don't want to, I don't want the responsibility of it. I want to be able to like, cause I'm getting ready to do a patch drop. Um, I've got some, some custom orders that people have been asking me about, but I was like, I got to wait till I get the tiny farm in order um, before I can do any of this. Cause it's, you know, it's, if you're a, if you do like home, I just call it the tiny farm. Cause it's very tiny. And, but if you do, you know, kind of the homestead farmer thing, whatever um, right now is a very busy time to get everything ready. We got chicks in and the bees need some attention and the garden needs to go in and you know just general maintenance that you put off during the winter so it's it's a lot of work right now so i'm getting but you know i got the garden in the the chicks are doing okay they're here and they're getting their their big girl feathers and the bees are right so i'm i'm at the point now where i can open up orders again and so i think i'm i'm going to be doing a push next week to get some patches out there, but I also got to work on the moral combat stuff. So I still got a lot to do. So now tell us about how you got the nickname steak on Twitter. You have a story behind that? that Not was, really. I, I always wondered. I, I have a tattoo. Hmm. Like I, like, yeah. like I, I have a steak tattoo. Like it literally says eat steak. Um, and it's actually was just a joke. Um, well, one because I love steak, but it's actually just a song by the Reverend Horton Heat, and uh, my son really loves the song, and he really likes steak. So I put it on me, and I was like, "All right, I'll just pick that for a name." Um, I went with at first when I had my first Twitter account, it was um, I had just picked a name. I just picked Susie Bartlow. I was like, "All right, I'll just pick a name," because it was a name that I had used. It's just like a fake name I had used to fill out like. You know, if you go to events or whatever and they're like, oh, we want your name and email address, you know, to get this free thing. I was like, all right. And then Susie Bartlow was born so I can get the free T-shirt or whatever. I'm like, I am not giving you my name and email address. But I, then I actually made the email address and then used it to sign up for Twitter. And I was like, well, I'll just stick with this. And uh, yeah, so that's where that all came from. I just made it up. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, what was one topic or event that made you question the world you live in? COVID. COVID was the one. Um, nothing nothing before COVID? Not, not other not, conspiracy? No, I didn't really care. Okay. I didn't really give a shit. Um, I was busy, you know, being a mom and a wife and growing my business and just working to survive and, you know, do all of that. And I didn't, I did not care about politics. I really didn't. Um, I all... From 2016 on, I I had a, I, what, what would be the term? I guess maybe an uneasy feeling because I knew, I didn't really know about Trump. I voted for him because I thought it was funny. You, you, you and me have the similar story because 2016 when I started caring about politics as well and him. And then after that, I was like, fuck all this. I'm well, done. I, I didn't. The only thing that I cared about was they wouldn't shut the fuck up about him everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was really annoying. Right. And so I was like, OK, something's going on because I have never seen them attack another president like this in my life. Right. Um, and it was like ugh. one of the things that stands out to me is the ice cream incident. Do you remember when like I don't know, they were talking about fucking ice cream or something and they were like, oh, Trump got two scoops and everybody else got one. I'm like, yeah, because he's a fucking president. Right. Like I remember, I remember hearing about that a little bit. Why are we making like this is a non issue. And so they were making every little thing about him a thing. 
And it was just fucking obnoxious, but I still really didn't care. Like my, my conservative to libertarian to anarchist pipeline was very quick. Um, I would say it happened within a year and a half, maybe. Um, cause I had just always kind of considered myself a conservative cause my parents were, and I was like, yeah, I don't like a lot of government. Like I said, I didn't pay attention, but I was like, yeah, I don't want more of this. I don't quit spending my money kind of thing. You know, I was, I was more before I, I didn't, I, now I look back on it. I'm like, I guess I was more socially liberal and fiscally conservative. Right. Um, but it was, I, I just, it was just so stupid. And so then, um, you know, 2020 hit and I lost my business and our, the whole world got turned upside down and I didn't have anything else better to do, but pay attention. And so it's like that meme, you know, who radicalized you? And it's like, you fucking did. You forced me to pay attention to the bullshit and now I'm here and I'm not going to shut the fuck up about it because my life is ruined, right? Mm -hmm. All the dreams that we had five years ago are fucking gone. Like they don't exist. Um, and now it's, it's, it's a little bit more like, of course we're still in America, right? It's not like we're living in some country that's getting bombed all the time. I'm, I'm very aware of that, but compared to our, you know, our lifestyle before and where, potentially it was heading you know we were on the track to do it's all gone right we're we're poorer than we were um you know and it's just i don't know and we're all just sitting here we're all like ducks under the water right we're all like sitting here like yeah i'm totally cool and inside it's like internal screaming because you're like something has to give eventually but then you wonder will it give Mm -hmm. ever because where's the fucking line right have we not hit that line yet where people are like fuck you no because i don't think we have and i don't know if we ever will i think we're just gonna sit in this very slow spiral of social order and decay and hopelessness and i don't think anything's ever gonna happen i agree with you on that it's not people have too much of an ego that they can't like push push away and like focus on like something like a main goal that they want to like fix about the world well or they do have a goal but they don't have the answers on how to fix it that's also and that's that's, that's part cool. of the problem right mm -hmm. um because the answers are really uncomfortable mm -hmm. for people um you don't want to have to talk about the steps that you would have to go through to fix things um it's not going to be pretty. You're not going to vote your way out of it, though. I'll tell you that much. I'm with you on that. I hate, I understand people and their voting things. Like, go vote in November. Like, bitch, your fucking politicians are not doing jack shit now. You're going to go, mm. you're going to go back and vote in November again. Like, they're not doing yeah. anything. Look, look well, closely at the clown show they're doing in, in the Senate room every mm. damn day. And vote. yeah, they butt fucking people up in there, man. Well, that they probably do do that uh, behind closed doors when the cameras are turned. No, oh no, they literally do that. Did you not see that? There was a video that came out of like some fucking Senate staffer getting ass fucked in some Senate hearing room or some shit. Somebody, somebody fact check this. I, but ba that's the gist of it. Like it came out and nobody gave a fuck. Nobody cared. They're just like, yeah, it happens, I guess. I don't even know if that dude got fired. He might have. Yeah, I didn't, but, hear, I didn't hear about that. But yeah. Yes, but that was uh, last year. I think that happened. But it was like, my God, the amount of um, debauchery and just, I don't know. Like like I said, I was socially liberal in the fact that I was like, keep it away from our kids, right? We need to protect children because they're the only true innocents in the world. And you know, I don't give a fuck if you swing or you like to dress up like a dog or you want to be, you know, if you want to pretend that you're a woman, whatever. But we don't need your fucking kinks in front of our face all the time. I don't want to be a party to that because to. it's non-consensual, right? If you have a shame kink and you get drug out into public, I don't want to see some bitch leading a dude around with a dog collar in his underpants on the side of the street. And then I have to try to explain to my child what the fuck that is. Like Jesus fucking Christ. How did we descend so fucking far? 
right? Like, because there's always been freaks and weirdos, right? Mm-hmm. I'll admit, yeah, I'm, a, last, I'm a freak last, and a weirdo too, the but they kept years, it in the, the fucking years, home. It's gone in more and more on like online. Yeah, it's it's left the private clubs and the homes and the basements of people. Um, and it's become mainstream now. So it's not even, I, I don't, I, I'm surprised that people aren't like, like it's not even taboo anymore. And it's like, well, then there's no fun in that, right? Because half the fun of being a deviant is the fact that it's taboo, right? But then when it's not, you have to keep going for pushing that envelope further and further. And we end up here, Right where we have these extreme body modifications and it just everything else that's going on. People wearing these fucking dog masks and leaving their dicks out in front of children. And it's like, stop, stop, fucking stop. And um, my mom and I actually kind of do a bit of a disagreement because she was trying to get my son into summer camp. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I'm not sending him to summer camp. She's like, why? I don't understand. I'm like, because you don't pay attention like I do. Like, she's like, well, you're looking, she told me, she's like, well, you're, you're, you're looking for it. I'm like, I don't look for this shit. It finds me. Like, if you just watch a stream of somebody that just posts like bullshit videos all day, like just stuff they find on the internet. It's like, all this shit is out there. Um, They're teaching it to your children. If a school takes federal funds, you're like, oh, that's only happening in California. No, if they take federal funds, it's happening everywhere. Even in your little small town in Georgia, that shit is happening. Right. It may not be um, as open, but if they want to keep getting those free lunches for those kids or whatever, they're going to say it eventually. Right. They're going to they're going to go till they can't anymore. They're going to. And it's. uh, uh-uh, This is why we homeschool. <laughs> yeah, I never I never went to summer camp at all. My parents never put me into any of these summer camps when I was little. Oh, and I did. Right. I did. I did. I, my parents, I never got I never was interested in going. Is probably why now, after being an adult and see what kind of shit they do at these camps behind closed doors, like, yeah, good thing my parents didn't do that. Yeah. Like, I just look at, you know, when you're a kid in summer camp, you have your counselors and you don't realize that they're only like, you know, 18, 19 years, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old. Like, you, they, you consider them adults because they're way bigger than you. But even then, back then, they didn't have cell phones, hardly, right? Heck, can't think. We did have cell phones. We had flip, flip phones. Well, we we didn't. No, not in the early you know early nineties. We we nobody really had cell phones that they carried around. Um, and if even if they did, they weren't allowed to carry them right during during work because nobody needed to be that reachable back then. And um, I just look at my counselors back then, and I'm like, and I look at I look at teenagers now, and I'm like, there's no fucking way. There's no way that I would leave my child with some of these people. And and the kids are even worse now. Um, Cause the, the, I mean, I just can't imagine, like we never had anybody that poorly behaved really um, in our classrooms. And then it's like a daily thing, right? Teachers like, I can't teach because these kids are just running around saying fuck all the time or whatever, right? And so I'm, I just can't trust any of these people around my child. And I know some of it's my past trauma that's bringing it on, right? But I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to, you know, he does get to socialize. He has friends that he gets to see. I don't keep him locked in the basement, right? But I am selective about who he spends his time with and what he sees. He's not allowed on, he's not allowed free access to the internet without me watching him, right? Um, I'm not going to have him discover rotten.com like I did, you know, that kind of thing. Um, plus he's a little autistic. So I, I, you know, he gets, uh, some things affect him way more than they should. And so I have to be careful about that because like, um, he actually was in summer camp last year. I, I let him go for a couple of weeks just to socialize and never doing that shit again. But there was a storm and the power went out in the building that they were in. And they were in this room where there wasn't any windows. And so it was pitch black and the kids started freaking out. Well, now, even a year later, my child still carries a flashlight everywhere. Because he's so worried about maybe the power going out. So then we have to teach him. It's like, it's okay to be prepared. You don't need to be scared, right? Be prepared. Don't be scared. That's what we say. 
you know, so it's, it's this fine balance of trying to figure it out and not traumatize our child at the same time. But I also don't need him being exposed to TikTok videos. And, you know, I cuss enough for all of us. I don't need, you know, I don't need him to see other kids running around doing that. Cause I told him, you know what, when you're an adult, cuss all you want, right? Mm -hmm. Not my problem. Mm -hmm. But right now, uh, uh. and I also have to discuss with him that there's certain things that we don't say in front of other people. And I hate that we have to um, have that conversation now, right? Um, that we have to be careful what we say about maybe the stuff that we have or what we're doing, because that will put us um, on people's radar, right? We don't talk, I'm like, you can't talk about our guns. You can't talk about you going to shoot guns, right? Like we don't talk about that, um, you know, except for with people we trust and things like that. And you don't tell people, you know, how much food we have in the basement, you know, stuff like that. We we don't talk about that because I don't, we, we, I'm much more secretive than I used to be. You don't want other so. people's negativity on you guys. Well, I don't want people reporting me to CPS going, this person homeschools their child and they let him shoot guns, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'd be one of those crazy prepper people, right? Those doomsday people which I'm not, right? I'm not, I, I I never wanted to get to the point where, you know, some people spend all of their, their retirement and their savings on all of this. I, I don't see the point in destroying your life now for something that may or may not happen in the future, right? Um, live your life now still, but be prepared just in case. Um, you know, like we're talking about, there's a lot of storms going around right now. We're in Kansas. We got tornadoes and shit. Um, if a tornado tears my house up, all my prep stuff is gone, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if not, if it doesn't destroy the house, we do have a way that we can survive, you know, in our house for a little bit if we get stuck, right? Um, or we're prepared to leave too if we need to. Um but we don't live that way, right? Um, I don't really know where I was going with this. <laughs> okay. So now, uh, my train of thought derailed. Go ahead. Now, someone who, like, you're a homeschooling parent, what's your honest opinion about the education system? It's a fucking nightmare. It's disgusting. Um, kids are stupider than ever, even though they have access to more information than ever. And um, it's a lot of, what's the term, revisionist history. I guess they're teaching kids things that didn't actually happen or how they, you know what I mean? Well, and they might've always done that, right? I mean, we can just assume that it's always been done that way, but it's, it's worse now. And kids are so fucking dumb. Seriously. The, we, this is the dumbest generation I've ever seen in my life. And it's not just the, the facts and skills part of it, right? It's the emotional part of it. Like I talked about earlier that, if you can't even regulate your own emotions, how are you supposed to function in a workplace, right? How are you supposed to do anything? Um, and like, I'm retarded, right? I'm very clear that I am, but I also have a lot of common sense about things and we don't have that anymore. Like common sense just isn't a thing. Um, any sort of logical thought processing, like if this happens, then this, this, you know, like, it just, it doesn't exist anymore. I don't know. I mean, there are a few, there's, there's some little shiny beacons of hope in the Gen Zers or whatever. Um, is it Gen Z? Yeah, it is. Maybe. Or is it? Yeah. I don't know where we're at right now. I'm getting old. Um, I don't know the difference between those three uh, generations. So continue on. Well, like I think it went, it went millennials, which we didn't, we call ourselves Gen Y back then. Cause it was after X, right? And it was Gen Y as in why not, you know, and then, yeah. And then the, then the zoomers and they just, uh, there's some that they're like, because now that all this weird shit is mainstream, it's not cool anymore. And so there's, there's a, you know, some kids that are pushing back, but it's not enough. Right. Um, so I don't, I don't know. It's just, I think it's just going to continue to get worse. And people say, oh, we're winning. You know, we won this little thing. You're not winning shit. 
you're not winning anything just because you won this little court case in this small town isn't going to do anything. Um, they're still pushing through all this shit at the federal level and people go, oh, well, worry about, you know, your community. OK, so like I, I think it was like on the Sibra podcast, we talked about like you have your your little city council, then you have a county government, then you have a state government and then you have the Fed. So that's I have to pay attention to all of that. Nobody has time unless your job is politics. You don't have time to pay attention to all that. I don't have time to research 45 candidates and all their positions on everything to make sure that I vote in every single election, right? It's it's impossible to do. And then you're supposed to know everything about, you know, all your insurance and all that. Like, I don't know how people keep on top of their health insurance shit because I don't understand any of that shit. I don't either. I don't either. I'm with you. I don't even go to the doctor anymore. Like, unless I can, like, if I if I can help it, I don't go to the fucking doctor. And I just, I don't trust him anymore. Like I see the shit that they're putting through medical schools and I see the retards that are doctors now. Fuck you. Don't touch me. You'll kill me. I don't trust you. After they tried I've to had, push those I've vaccines had. on everybody. Uh -uh, I, I lost it. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've heard my episodes before, but I mentioned I had a kidney transplant when I, when I was younger. So I see, no, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. So I see transplant doctors, adult doctors now, and they're the most idiotic doctors I've ever come around. All they do nowadays is ask me, did you get the vaccine? Did you get the boosters? Like, I don't say anything. I just sit to them and like roll my eyes about behind my in my brain. It's like, can we go to the appointment? Go like forward and I'll talk about my appointment instead of asking me about that. It's like ever since ever since the situation with my Yorkie and he got he got severely sick for the medicine he overdosed on and the doctors didn't do anything. Ever since then, my like my like level of like trusting doctors have gone to like a like a zero now. I don't trust them at all. Yeah, no, I just, and, you know, it, it was, uh, well, and it was the whole, you know, where, where are you willing to draw the line? Um, I lost a lot of respect for a lot of people during COVID because they weren't willing to stand up for it. Um, like my, my cousin's wife is a doctor and this was close to the beginning of COVID. And this was the thing that made me go, wait a minute, something's fucky here, right? Is somebody, um, had died of a heart attack or something, right? Not COVID. But then she was telling the family that uh, they were convincing her to fill it out, fill out the death certificate as a COVID death, even though she wasn't comfortable doing it, um, just so they could get the funding or whatever, right? And so now it's like, Okay, so you you were uncomfortable. This is something that you didn't want to do, yet you did it anyway, just so you could keep your fucking job. And people don't realize how big of a motivator that is because we saw it over and over and over again. People were just going along to get along to stay comfortable. And I lose, I don't have respect for her anymore, right? Like I was willing to give up my house and my entire lifestyle to tell you to go fuck yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And I just don't understand how people can sleep at night, <laughs> right? They're like, oh, I sleep very well on my expensive mattress. Good for you. I'm sleeping in a camper because I wasn't going to go against my principles. Um, people may not like me, but I'm pretty sure I'm one of the most principled people you'll fucking meet, right? People go, oh, would you have sex with this gross person for a million dollars? No, I fucking wouldn't, right? Because it's just fucking money. And I don't think I could live with myself if I sold my body like that, right? I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't bring myself to do it. I know a lot of people be like, oh, I definitely would. Cool that you're okay with that, but I'm not. So there's no amount of money that would make me do that. And I just, I don't know, I don't get it. But I don't want to hang out with those people anyway. Like, if you can't willy, be willing to be a little uncomfortable for your beliefs, then you don't deserve any of it. Exactly. I don't know. Because freedom's a fight. It's not, but what's that, you know, freedom is free, that crap that went around, which was, you know, it was kind of, now that you look back on the, you know, the whole war on terror thing or whatever, where they put all that out. And it's like, well, that was just like government propaganda at that point, right? But they were right but in the opposite direction, right? 
um, because we lost so much freedom, but we were thinking that, oh, we have this big enemy that we have to fight when we were literally living amongst the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. We just didn't know, but they like to do that. They like to shift your view from, oh, we're not, you know, we're doing this over here, but look over there, right? Look at that bad guy. They're doing worse things, even though we're the ones that are funding them and giving them the fucking bullets, right? Yeah, that's something so, people don't up. understand. That's, that's something people don't understand, which blows my mind because I've I've come to realization that both sides of the government is all the same and they fund each other mm -hmm. to push their own agenda and push other countries ahead. Yeah. It's all a giant circle jerk. Mm -hmm. And um until people realize that, you know. But oh, I never finished my story about my like I, you know, like I said, I was a conservative. I didn't really know a whole lot about politics. Um, I left Facebook because I knew that I couldn't say anything that I wanted to because my it was my name, right? So then I created a Twitter account. I was like, hey, I can go anonymous on here, kind of. And um, I could, you know, so then I started, don't, I know this is cringe, right? Like I started watching um, like Dan Bongino and Ben Shapiro and Stephen Crowder and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, this was in part of my journey. It's part of my journey, okay? I didn't know no better. Right. But they were like the big names in kind of conservative slash libertarian, whatever. And so that was kind of my intro to that. And then I was like, wait a minute. Then I started realizing I'm like, wait, they're just advocating for shit that they want. Uh, something's wrong with this. And then I realized it was all bullshit. And sorry, libertarians. Yeah, it's all bullshit. Um, and so then I was like, fuck it. I don't want anybody to be in charge of me. I never really did. Um, I'll listen to my husband sometimes, right? Um, because I respect him enough to do that. Um, and I trust that he has, like, I, I know that he doesn't want anything to happen to me, right? Like, we have a mutual, mutual thing there. And, um, but there's, I don't see him having any sort of ulterior motive <laughs> for the things that he does unlike the government so i'm like nope i'm just done with all of it i don't want any of it um and we need it the whole thing needs to needs to be we need a reset but not the reset that they want mm -hmm. i don't know maybe it's the reset that they're gonna get though i don't i don't know i really don't know my my theory is that they want to get us into a new world war um and they want you know the nukes pointed at everybody and then they're going to go, whoa, 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 wait, we can't do this. We can't just start nuking people. Why are we fighting all the time? If we were all one thing, one group, then we would never, we wouldn't fight. We wouldn't have any reason to fight, right? We don't have, we wouldn't have governments fighting. So that's what I think they're going to do is that's how they're going to usher it in. It's just going, you know, we can't, you know, they're going to set it up and they're already getting their stuff like organized for that i don't know it's taking too goddamn long though they keep talking about like 2035 i'm like i'm not doing this shit for another 10 years i can't i can't fucking do it i'm tired so now let me ask you a question why do you think there has been a significant push towards gender identity gender ideology in the recent yeah. years because it makes people sad and confused and manipulated if you look at like like i've got i i know people that are are trans um and just out of respect for them because i i like them i'll use their pronouns sometimes if i remember um but i just i i don't know it's just one more way to fuck everything up i think right like i do believe that there are those what's the words what's the word i want to use anomalies i guess is the word i'll use anomalies with people um but then I look back on what happened to me as a child and you notice that it's a lot of people that are autistic or they have sexual trauma. It's like they're just trying to separate them from, from their families, um, brainwashing in a way, right? Because you got these people out there going, you should, you know, you should go no contact with your parents and then I'll be your friend, right? Ugh. No, stop. Stop trying to touch my fucking child. Um, and I, that's what I think it is. I think um, I think they're going to try to get to the point that um, they, because people go, oh, the slippery slope isn't real. Oh, it's absolutely fucking real. We've seen it happen right before our eyes, right? But I think they're trying to get to the point where um, 
if age is just a number because children know everything about sex and whatever that adults do, then that's all it is. It's literally just a number and they just want to fuck kids, right? I mean, the amount of people that have come out as that we found that have done creepy, you know, and you can try to use all the special words you want, you know, like, oh, this liking a child that's 14 doesn't make you a pedophile kind of thing, whatever the fuck that word is that they use. Um, and just trying to normalize it. And that's that's the problem, right? Is like nobody gave a fuck if you wanted to wear a dress to Walmart, right? We'd probably snicker at you a little bit, but you were free to do it, right? It's just like back in the day, if a woman wore pants, she would probably get shit on for wearing pants, right? It, but we're just moving that moving that that needle a little further all the time. But where do we stop, right? There is no there is no stopping that. Um, and I think that's what a lot of it is, is because my child doesn't need to know about what makes people come, right? He doesn't need to know about your fucking kinks. He doesn't need to know about certain things that you can put in your ass. He doesn't need to know any of that, um, which is one of the reasons I pulled him out of school, right? Like I don't, we didn't have a huge problem with that in his school, but you could tell it was coming, right? Um, and so I just, mm -mm, I'm just done. <laughs> so thankfully he's not, um, super into like going out all the time he's a bit of a homebody like we are like he likes to see his friends and his family but other than that he's like nah i don't really want to go play with those kids in the park. i'm like all right so, so, now, so now if you could choose four favorite movies in any genre what would those be and why oh my god i don't even know i don't i honestly couldn't tell you there's a lot of movies i like Okay, now what are some of your favorite movies then? Uh, uh, I don't know. I honestly don't watch TV that much anymore. Um, I like, uh, I don't know. Actually, I've been watching the Marvel movies over again. Some of them just because they're like stupid and I don't have to think about it so much. I don't like anything new. I'll say that. Um, I get really apprehensive about starting a new TV show or a movie if it was made after like 2016. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Um, I'm with you. Yeah, after things that. got I, stupid. Yeah, I don't watch so, anything. Here's the thing. Here's how I noticed something. Everything Netflix Netflix releases, it goes to like three seasons and then they like cancel it or just one season and they cancel it. Like, yeah. Shit. It's annoying. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, like we, I like the boys. I think that one's kind of funny. Um, I, I really like, gratuitous violence i think it's funny uh just because it's so over the top right but um so that's what we're doing right now is we're watching well we're watching like one episode of fallout a week just because you know we're just we're trying to get through until june 13th for when the new season of the boys starts um we're actually re-watching psych right now too which I think it holds up. It's a silly little show, but it's not, you know, it's for lack of a better term. I hate, I hate the term woke because it's so fucking overused for everything now. Like we need a different term um, because the boomers got a hold of it. And now it's, you know, it's way too dead. But um, I just, I don't like to be preached to all the time when I'm watching TV and movies. I just watch a lot of streams. Yeah. Now, honestly, that's mostly what I watch anymore. Um, unless Mr. Steak is home and then we'll we'll watch something. Like we started watching um because I I've seen bits and pieces of Star Trek. He's uh here's a little secret about Mr. Steak. He's he looks like a fucking lumberjack, but he's a fucking trekkie. Like he <laughs> he is. He's a he's a he's a big hairy nerd. And um, which is kind of my favorite, right? Like he's a big teddy bear. Um it, it takes a lot to make him angry, but I, I saw him angry once and I really, I really don't want to see that again. Like it was, it was, a, it was, what's the word? Scaroused that word, <laughs> that kind of thing. It wasn't directed at me, thankfully. Um, he's never been that mad at me, but, um, uh, so we started watching the, uh, the original series of Star Trek. We're almost done. We have like three episodes left of the series 
And then we're going to move on to, I don't know, whatever's next. DS9 or TNG or whatever. I don't know. Um, but, you know, just because it's not, you know, it's old and it's not full of such bullshit or it's full of old bullshit, right? That nobody gives a fuck about anymore. Like nobody cares about problems from 1980. So nobody remembers any of the problems from 1980 or 1990. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now what is some of your favorite genre of music you enjoy listening to dude i listen to everything honestly if it's got I, everything like i've got i've got anything from like japanese bossa nova to hard bass to classical to you know death metal whatever right if i like it i like it i really don't um, I got a lot of stupid shit. Like I have a weird shit playlist. That's just the, some of the weirdest fucking songs you've ever heard or funny, you know, or you're like, what did they just fucking say that? What the fuck? That kind of thing. I don't really care. I don't, um, like I, most of the time though, I do listen to something that has a beat because when I listen to music, generally like a large chunk of music, it's generally on skating days. Cause I have my skating playlist, right? But I also have Orinoco Flow in that playlist because that's my fucking jam, right? Like, I like Inya, too. I don't know. It doesn't, I, I, like I said, I don't really have, did I mute? Are we good? No, we're good. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't, I'm just really tired of labeling everything all the time. I don't want to put, you know, because it's like, what was it? I think it was like Brian Setzer or something had a song about, I think it was called like really rockabilly or something. And he went through and he just named like eight different genres of rockabilly, if not more. And it's like, how do we break that down so much? I'm just really tired. And then everybody's like, oh, well, I'm this, this, and this. And I'm like, can we just like stop putting all of these tags on everything all the time? I'm just, I'm so tired of it. I'm just so tired. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm anyway. with you on that. I listen to metal music more and rock. And half of these people talk about like subgenres. I have no idea. It's like stop, stop labeling these artists in these genres. They're like all yeah. every, they're everything that they're doing. Every yeah. every form of metal that they want to do is like stop it. It's stupid. Yeah. Well, and then it kind of puts you in a box, right? Because then it's like, oh well, if you only play post proto industrial faggot metal or something, I don't even know, right? But it's like that that specific. Like you, are you not even allowed to try anything a little bit different or else it'd be like, oh no, they're totally different than they used to be when they just added, I don't know, another guitar or something. I don't fucking know. I don't pay attention. Like I, I never really cared much about who was in the band, really the meaning behind the lyrics too much. It was just like, if I like it, I like it. If it's angry enough, maybe, I, I don't know. I just... I just don't give a fuck about much anymore. I really don't. Um, I'm not near as emotional as I used to be either. Like I'm way chiller. This is me chill right now. <laughs> um, I Like I said, I used to be very angry. And I realized that that wasn't going to do anything. I went from being, I'm more, I don't know. I just, I laugh at everything now if I, I can. Do, I do the it's exact just, same thing. It's just so fucking funny thing. now. Mm -hmm. Everything is a big fucking joke. And um, if you don't see that, then I'm sorry for you because it's all so fucking stupid. And they just keep pushing more and more of the fucking stupidity. And so all you can do is laugh at them. That's all you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. So now what was your first ever concert you attended? Oh, honestly, I don't remember. I don't. Um, I've seen Tool. I've been to Ozfest. I've been what was that? Warp Tour. I've seen Blink One Eighty Two a few times. I've seen Aerosmith. I've seen. Uh, oh fuck! What is his name? The sexy song guy, uh, <laughs> Rod Stewart. My mom took me to see Rod Stewart, but he didn't sing the sexy song. And I was really upset about that. Um, I've seen, what is it? Tibetan throat singers. Uh, 
Uh, I've been to quite a few shows. Um, I've seen the Reverend Horton Heat like five times or something. Because they always, when they, they come to small venues and it, they're cheap to see. So that's a fun time. I don't know. I, I've seen Metallica. I don't really go to concerts anymore either. I don't like going to places where there's a lot of people. I'm, I don't like. I'm about people. to go to a concert this evening and I'm not looking forward to going because I have to go my, by myself. Second time going by myself, my anxiety's to the roof. It, yeah, I, I don't. I just, I, have, I, I do have anxiety people, about and people. Then, and then random people start talking to you. You got to like chit chat with them. It's like, go away, please. And if they're like, if they're drinking, if they're like already on like the first beer and they start chatting with you, it's like, go, go away, please. It's like, it's too much. It's too much for me. Yeah, I do. I do have, I used to be very social. I could talk to anybody. Didn't really have any problems. I mean, hell, I used to practice it all the time when I had my business. Like that was part of my job was just being able to strike up conversations with random people and getting them to buy shit. And now it's like, I don't want to talk to you because there's a 50, 50 chance that you're going to fucking hate me. Right. And you're just going to instantly consider me an enemy. But I'm also, I mean, I can't say a whole lot about that because I kind of have the same mindset because that line has been drawn, right? It's either you, you want freedom essentially or you don't want me to have my freedoms and you want me to go along with what you want. And I don't want to play that game. And like, I, I don't really have any IRL friends. Um, lost most of those, uh, probably close to the beginning of COVID. I just stopped talking to him. Cause I was like, I really don't care about never, you anymore. I never, I never had real life friends any, to begin with. Oh, the- that's sad of me. Yeah. Aww. All the friends I've like made are from like Twitter, like Paul, Doug, and all of them. That's yeah. how I became friends with all of them. But if you knew me like five years ago, I was the most loner kid that you'll meet. I had zero friends. Because I, See, and I, I, had I always had friends. Kids, that's the problem. I always had friends. I like did. in high school. I was picking college the friends I stuff. had. But I, had I, I didn't I didn't have a lot school. of close friends. Um, I was kind of part of a lot of different groups of people i never really stuck with one so much um i didn't want to limit myself that way plus i didn't hold myself in such high regard where i'm like you know i really you know like 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 the popular kids you know the rich popular kids i'm like that's your parents money not yours your shit stinks like the rest of us so i never wanted to be part of that group i didn't really care and I would talk to some people from those groups and stuff, but they were like cooler about it. Right. But I just, I don't know. I don't really care to associate with you unless we're kind of on the same wavelength about our rights. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm Why would you. I mm-hmm. even entertain a conversation with you? If you want me to prevent, if you want to prevent me from, I don't know, protecting myself. Right. As a little old woman over here. Right. Right. I just, I can't even entertain the idea of you anymore. Um, I do have an IRL friend now. She's kind of new. We actually, we knew each other. We swam together in high school. I used to be a swimmer and um, wasn't friends with her in high school. But then I saw her at the skating rink a few months ago and I'd never forget a face. And I'm like, hey, we went to school together, but I don't remember who the fuck you are. So then I started talking to her. Well, and then I come to find out that like, she's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a butcher. And I was like, bitch, I love meat. Like I have a steak tattoo. I was like, did we just become best friends? And she like, she considers herself a libertarian, which is fine. Right. If you're not, it's, um, better, it's better than being a Democrat. I'll say that for the most part. Yes. There's some libertarians that need to get their shit rocked, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. um, it's uh you know it's it's a good start i think like if if you're not at least a libertarian i don't even know if i can really talk to you much anymore because you're just too far fucking gone and you can't see the big picture right i don't know maybe that makes me an asshole i really don't give a shit um i don't get as much of an emotional connection to people as i used to um i keep people at a distance now um but like i said i'm not near as emotional as i used to be but i have had to do that um, because I didn't want to get hurt anymore. Right. Because then people would, you know, I'd try to become friends with people and then they'd find out that I'm too extreme or whatever. 
And I just, I stopped caring, you know, I'm like, okay, if you want to be my friend, cool. If not, whatever, I'm not going to worry about it. But the, that being said, I think I've met God probably close to a hundred people from Twitter, like it IRL. I think it's probably that number. I could say probably a hundred and not be that far off. Um, cause I've gone to a few meetups. Um, I actually traveled to meet a bunch of mutuals in Tennessee last year. I, I, I saw you tweet about that. Yeah, that was, that was fun. And I've never really had a horrible interaction with somebody, but I'm also very particular, right? Um, and I just really haven't had a lot of issues. And it seems like I get along with it. I mean, but also, you know, we're all kind of on the same page too. So, you know, just, just by that, even if your personalities clash a little bit, like, you know, that you may be an asshole, but I don't want to take away your ability to be an asshole. <laughs> right. Um, so just for that, there's like some, a bit of a level of, um, I don't know, I guess mutual respect and understanding in that. And so like, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be around you, but maybe I don't necessarily have to talk to you, but it's not going to be awkward or uncomfortable at all because you're not trying to fuck me over, I guess, for the most part. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I've had to like really like like really, really think the people I'm gonna bring in my circle nowadays because mm -hmm. I don't trust anyone anymore. It's like yeah, the exactly. few people I had in my Yeah, life. it's more of a Close quality circle. over quantity thing now, right? You want people around you that are gonna support you and have a similar thought process, right? Because if not, then it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. Um and those are the people that would report you. <laughs> report you to the the Stasi or what the fuck ever, right? That they would have like we saw that over COVID, people would happily turn in their neighbors because they went out to get their mail without a mask on or whatever. And it's just it's so fucking stupid. It's also fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. So I just laugh now. I try to laugh as much as possible. I try not to care as much as possible because I don't. I don't have it in me to care that much anymore. I really just can't. Um, if I try to get too empathetic with people, it'd it it'd put me in a dark place, I think. Um, it's almost like I've become numbed to everything that's going. Like, I'm very aware of what's happening, right? Uh, of course, none of us know the level as to what everything is happening. We can just know that it's happening. And, you know, you just... I don't know. I don't know, man. So now tell me about the three most influential people in your life and how they affected you positively or negatively. Oh, I don't know. Probably my mom, my husband and my son, I guess. Like I keep my, I keep my circle really close. I don't, um, I don't put anybody on a pedestal really. Um, I, I don't get into the mindset that just because I like this person or what they have to say that they're infallible. Um, we're all just people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like any celebrities. I really could give a shit. Um, I, I like to joke uh, like one well, that I have, you know, friends, like I have internet friends and stuff that are, that are rich. Right. I mean, hell, we have internet friends that are millionaires. I don't give a shit. Um, I like to say that I keep the homies humble because yeah, you may have money, but I'm going to make fun of you. I don't care. Like I'll make fun of you for being rich. I don't give a shit. Um, I just, I don't know. Hey, can we, how much time do we have left? We have, why? I have to pee. Sorry. We got edit that out. I have to take a bathroom break. Okay. okay I'll, I'm gonna, I'll pause it. Phone. So. Okay. Okay. So. How it's, you... it's fine though. I started at like 79%. So we could probably go for just as long as we did. I don't know how long you want to make this, but we're almost, we're almost done. So how did <laughs> okay. you and, so how did you and Mr. State meet each other? Um, I was dating his friend oh, in really? the eighth grade. Yeah. Um, I actually went over uh because they went to the the rival school in town. And uh, I went over to the guy's house that I was dating and they were both sitting there in his garage, like pretending like they knew how to play the guitar. And he was wearing a wife beater. And because his mom didn't spend a lot of money, she shopped at JC Penney's. He was wearing kickwear jean shorts. Cause she didn't want to buy him Jenko's, Right. 
And he had one of those butt cuts, you know, where it's parted down the middle. And he was just the chubby kid. And I didn't pay any attention to it because when I was younger, I was, I was considered very attractive. Uh, I was tall and thin and blonde and fit because I was a swimmer. So uh, <laughs> nothing really. Um, I actually dated a couple more of his friends, <laughs> but um, I would see him at uh like marching band stuff because we were both in marching band so when our schools played each other i'd see him and he wasn't hard to spot because he played the sousaphone and he was six two so he stood out from everybody because you know giant thing and so i'd say hi to him you know and that was about it and then when we were 20 the same guy that i had dated in eighth grade uh we we, we were still friends so he was like hey come out to the bar some guys from high school are there i think you know him okay so I went out and I was like, who's that? He's cute. Well, it was Mr. Steak, but he had cut his hair off short and grew a goatee, you know, grew some facial hair. And I was like, damn, he looks good now. So then, you know, started talking to him. And that was about it. It's just funny, though, because it's like if I ever came up to you in eighth grade and been like, you know what, someday we're going to get married. You would never believe me. Um, but yeah, it's he's pretty awesome. He puts up with my shit. I put up with his shit. You know, it's just mutual retardation in our house. It's a lot of fun because it's, it's, we're a house of ADD and autism. So it's kind of a disaster here all the time, but it's like, it's like a beautiful disaster, right? It's great. And we are all crazy about each other. And our son has never not known love. Um, he probably gets smothered by it sometimes, but oh, well, you know, I wasn't going to have, I'm not going to have him grow up thinking that his family doesn't love him and isn't there to support him for pretty much everything he does. Right. So, yeah. So you guys are high school sweethearts then? No, we didn't date in high school. Oh, okay. So after, no, so after high school. Yeah. After. And we, we went through some stuff. Like I was going through my own shit, trying to figure myself out. Cause I had like I was on birth control and SSRIs and that shit made me fucking crazy. I don't know how he put up with it for so long, um, honestly. But then, um, cause like I said, I am way chiller than I was back in the day because I literally am like, I used to, I used to be very angry all the time. Um, depressed. I tried to kill myself a few times and it was always when I was on meds mm. and now I'm not on meds and I don't think about killing myself every day. I still wish for death, you know, the sweet release of death, but I don't want to do it myself, right? Mm -hmm. um, just because everything's a shit show, but I can't do that to my son, right? He's not ready. Um, but, I, you know, we've had to have the conversation like someday, you know, we're going to die, right? Like that happens. Um, you know, like I said, I don't like to think about my parents dying, but someday they will because my grandmother just died last year. She was my last grandparent. And so we had to, you know, have that, that talk that, you know, unfortunately everybody you love will die someday <laughs> and, you know, with more tact, obviously, but, you know, it's like, I want you to care enough to learn from these people because I didn't like, I, I regret not talking to my grandfather much, I'm with you. Um, but he, he died when I was younger. Like I was like 12 or 13 so, you know, I was a stupid kid, didn't even think about it. But I do regret not interacting with my grandparents so much and learning more from them. So he actually, um, one night a week, every, like he trades off. So every, I, we do get a bit of a break. From him. Like he gets to go, I want him to have a good relationship with his grandparents. So one night a week, you know, one week he'll go to my parents' house. The next week he'll go to my in-laws' house. And one lives in the city, one lives in the country. You know, he gets the best of both worlds. Um, and he's just, I think he's, he's learning a lot and he's learning that family matters, you know, and to, you know, to spend time with the people that you care about and don't spend time with people you don't care about so much if you can help it. Right. Mm -hmm. I know I'm being idealistic with a lot of this cause I don't have a fucking job, but. Mm -hmm. So I know your mom, so please define motherhood in your own words. And what is it like being a mom? Oh God. Um, it's weird. It's weird. Cause I'm, I'm a retard. 
And so I'm like, man, somebody actually trusts me to raise a child. Um, it's, it's tough, especially when you have a kid that kind of has his own issues, right? Cause he's, he's a little autistic and ADD and with us being, you know, ADD, it's, it's, like I said, it's kind of a madhouse over here sometimes. Um, but it's, he's a good kid. Like he's such a sweetheart. He's not built for this world. I feel so bad for him all the time because he's so sweet and he's so giving and he's not terribly demanding. Like he doesn't like, he doesn't go, mom, I need an iPhone or I want this video game system or whatever. He doesn't ask for expensive clothes. He doesn't want any of it. He doesn't care. And so I just, I feel so bad because I have to give him these, these, you know, lessons in survival essentially. And I'm like, baby, I don't want to have to teach you any of this. Right. Like I want you to just be able to be a kid. But I said, the world I grew up in is not the world that you're growing up in and you need to be able to take care of yourself. Um, and so it's, I would say, I, I mean, of course I don't have any reference point, but I would say being a parent now is harder than it was. Cause you have all of this shit you're fighting against before. I think it was a little easier to keep your kids protected um, because they didn't have unfettered access to the internet all the time. Right. To see how everybody else lives. And a lot of it's fake, right? Like people can fake their fucking lifestyles. And, you know, I just, I don't know, man. It's, it's an interesting challenge. Mm -hmm. I love it though. Like he's great. I don't think I'd want another one because why mess with perfection? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he acts like me and looks like my husband. Um, This poor kid. <laughs> so now what is holding humans back from working together on like a, on a, anything technology want to elaborate on that why um because if you can have machines do a lot of things for you we have this ai bullshit um there's not as much mutualism required um the instant gratification economy um, being able to just go to a store and pick up whatever you want or need. Um, the disconnection of people from the food chain. Uh, not knowing where your food comes from. Things like that. Like, um, I just, yeah. People caring too much about stupid shit that doesn't matter to the survival of humanity. And people being extremely selfish and not giving a fuck about anybody else. Mm -hmm. Right on, right on. So now questions in the episode. Uh, what are three podcasts you recommend to my listeners and why? Oh, goodness. Um, it, I, doesn't, it doesn't have to be a podcast. It's going to be like streams you watch as well. No, no, no. I know. Uh, the majority of streams I watch actually are in the um, outside of like documentaries and informative streams. Um, are once uh, in the ROTC family, Revenge of the Sis guys, Royce, Mersh, Major Tom, Pessy, all them. Um, because everybody, you know, they all come together on shows, but then they all have their own shows that they do. Um, so it's a constant source of entertainment and retardation. If you want to have a laugh and just not care about the stupid shit so much, it's a great, it's a great break. Um. And they all, I mean, they all seem nice enough, right? Like, I don't even really give them any money. So I'm not in that whole, we're friends because I pay them kind of thing, you know. Um, but they, I don't know. The, that's usually what I watch during the day because there's always at least, there's always like at least two streams from them to watch every day. Um, I like L. Uh, Lauren, she's some bitch I know on Twitter. She does big dig energy. She does deep dives into stuff and she just goes down her little autistic rabbit holes and connects all the dots for things. And then generally, other than that, it's just like, yeah, it's just like documentary style things um, about, I don't know, whatever, whatever I'm in the mood for. Mm -hmm. So I don't really use uh, YouTube too much but there are some people that are just on youtube that are on rumble because rumble's a fucking nightmare oh yeah it definitely is 
I agree with that. I think if they, that's, Rumble makes me mad because it's like, they're trying to make improvements, but it just makes everything more irritating. And it was like, if you would have just focused on making something functional, um, I don't think, I, th I think you would be more popular now, right? Because they did, I, I, from what I feel like, they started out as like the free speech alternative to YouTube. But unfortunately, by saying that, you have to be, you have to be able to have a lot of the functionality that YouTube has, right? Like I can't, I don't, I don't even think I have the ability to like save videos to watch later. The thing that pissed me off most recently is they got rid of the likes counter on the feed, you know? So I used to be able to like something cause I would like something after I finished watching it. That way I knew that I watched it. And so when I was scrolling through, I could be like, Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Right. And they got rid of that on the home screen. So now I have to go through each individual video and then, yeah, I get creators get revenue from this, but if they're going to make the fucking ads work and uh, because it'll like play the first ad or and then it'll just freeze on the second one and never play. So then I can't watch the stream anyway. Um, or it'll start playing ad audio like an hour and a half into a stream that I'm watching just randomly. Even if I shut down the app, it's really, it's like corrupted and fuck. I don't know. It's stupid. But anyway. <laughs> okay. so now the that went off on a tangent i'm sorry so now the next question is however you want to answer it if you had the attention of the world for five minutes what would you want to tell them the government hates you and once you dead plan accordingly um and uh it's most of it's propaganda but they won't listen though right because we literally have people screaming from the mountaintops that this shit is happening and people go, no, that's not true. That's a conspiracy theory, blah, blah, blah. And you can go, you know, show them the documentation. They'll go, well, that's not from CNN, so I don't believe it. And then you'll show them something from CNN. And they'll be like, oh, well, that's fake. Um, we're at a weird time where people have, uh, what's the term? Is it cognitive dissonance? I don't know if that's the term to use. That's the term. That's the term. Um, where they just, even if it's right in front of them, they're not going to believe it, right? Um, because a, I think a lot of people, because over the past few decades, we've been growing up in this kind of bubble where we're trying to protect everybody's feelings all the time and don't allow children to process things properly and learn how their emotions should function properly. Um, that they just can't handle even the idea that everything is fucked and it's a lot like they can't cope with it and like i was talking about earlier with the boomers and stuff they don't want to believe it because they can't they can't handle what would happen if they actually went with that like my mom went through a bit of a thing um with all of that um she was like you know i thought you were you were kind of being extreme and crazy at first when you start talking about this. Cause I, like I said, I didn't really do politics until COVID shit started mm -hmm. and she thought I was going too far with it. And she's like, no, that's not a thing. And I'm like, no, look here, here's this, here's this. And I said, it never stopped. You know, it never, it's not, I don't even think it's necessarily, you know, I would probably say it's worse now just for the simple fact that they're so open about it. Like they will straight up lie to your face and you can even with, you know, with the internet, you can go, we know you're lying. You know, you didn't used to be able to do that in the fifties unless you like came out as a group or like, we know you're lying and they don't give a fuck. Like they'll look at you and smile and fucking lie to you. And there's, you know, and they know that I think it's worse now because they know that there's nothing that you can do about it. Right. They're like, we will tell you whatever we want to because there's nothing you can fucking do about it. We will appoint a guy with a degree in fucking music to be in charge of financial policy, and he'll go, I don't even know what we do with the money. Did you see that video of that guy? What the fuck is his name? I posted it, I think a couple days ago. It's it's a terrifying video, because he's like, do we, I don't know, do we do this? Is this how this money thing works? Go through my feed, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's absolutely terrifying because 
And like I said, he's either a complete moron or he's an evil genius. But I think it's almost this combination of both. Like they hire stupid people because they'll tout the party line. Mm -hmm. But then these people also know that they don't know anything about this. But yet for the money and the notoriety or whatever the fuck it is, they'll keep going with it. Um, you know, just like any other grifter <coughs> on the internet. Um, so it, it is, it's almost like this moronic evil because if I, I mean, I could go and pretend to be a doctor, but I don't know anything about being a doctor, but if I'm still getting paid, who gives a fuck? I'll just keep pretending to be a doctor, whatever. Right. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's not, it's not good. And then people go, oh, well, they're they're ending this like that. Um, what was that? That disinformation czar or whatever, that lady. Um, they were like, oh, you know, we're starting this committee or whatever. And then they're like, oh, never mind. No, they didn't stop it. They just renamed it something else and hit it. Like, because she started a, a, a group that does the exact same thing. So, you know, she's getting government funding mm. for her nonprofit. But it's not um, it's not under the government's umbrella now. So she just has carte blanche to do whatever. Right. And still continue to do it. It's like with MK Ultra. They never ended the experiments, even though people were like, hey, this is. Um, fuck, what's the word? Sorry, I lose words sometimes. Um, well, it's not right to do right. We shouldn't do this. Well, they're like, oh, yeah, well, we stopped doing that. No, they didn't. They just moved it to Canada. It's like with gain of function research, people are like, maybe we shouldn't do that. And they're like, oh, yeah, we stopped doing it. No, they just moved it to China and Ukraine and everywhere else. Right. They never stop doing what they're doing. They just move it to other countries because then there's no oversight over it. How the fuck are we going to know that they're researching shit in, in the Ukraine until it comes out that they're like, yeah, they have all these bio labs in Ukraine. We're like, yeah. Because they never stop doing the bullshit that they're doing. They just hide it better. But now they don't even need to hide it. Because what the fuck are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. Like they can come to your house and shoot your fucking dog. For no reason. What the fuck are you going to do about it? They'll just throw your ass in prison. Mm-hmm. Like people. Uh, and then people are fighting about stupid shit on the timeline all the time. And like drawing dividing lines about fucking pineapple on pizza. Or if there's beans and chili. And it's like, you guys really need to see the bigger yeah. picture here yeah, instead of fighting that. about these little details about stupid shit that does not matter to you being allowed to exercise your rights as a human being, right? Like, it doesn't fucking matter. And people are arguing with idiots on the internet. And it's like, that's probably just a sock account of somebody just trying to get you riled up. Mm-hmm. Like, stop wasting your energy on people that don't give a fuck about you. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My Twitter experience is much nicer that I stopped arguing with in- idiots now. So I just I just keep scrolling and I'll, I'll block or mute and I'll just keep fucking scrolling. I don't even care. I do the same thing. I don't interact with anyone on Twitter because I don't have the time for it or energy. Oh, I do because I don't do anything all day because I'm lazy. But. And I am social. I just, I like it to be on my terms, right? Like if I feel like chatting with people and stuff, then I'll be more active. If I don't, then I don't have to. It's kind of nice that it's, yeah, it's on my terms. I don't, you know, it's not like I'm stuck in a work environment where I'm forced to talk to people all the time. Like tomorrow I'm going to my friend's graduation from college and she's like, oh, you can meet my family and sit with them. And I'm like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. I have to I was, be. So, I was supposed to go to. I'm like, I'm not I was supposed good. to go to graduation I'm, as well, but like, I'm not going. And it's, I, it's like, I think my dad probably already left. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to that because I don't. Even I'm gonna go because I want to be supportive of my friend, but then I know I'm gonna have anxiety about it because most people that talk to me don't. Not necessarily that they don't like me, but they probably don't like me. Um, but I'm kind of. I just, I say what I, what I want. And a lot of people don't like that or there's stuff that people don't want to hear. And so that's why I just really don't, I don't interact with people much. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So tomorrow might be interesting. We'll, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. So that might be fun. 
before we leave, uh, did you ever have any paranormal uh, experience before? Yes, several. Okay, tell us about that. You ready? Okay. okay. Um, the first one, and they were all at my house. Um, the first one, I was sitting in the backyard, and it was it was dark on the patio because sometimes I just like to sit outside when it's nice out and smoke cigarettes and play on my phone or whatever. And I go and out of the corner of my eye, I was still through my glasses because I can't see without the damn things along the fence between us and our neighbor's house. It was about two feet off the ground and it was almost like a rectangle shape, but it was translucent. I could see through it, right? I could see the fence behind it and it was just like this mist shape and it just floated down the fence line and then disappeared. And I, I I watched it with my eye because I didn't move my head, right? I just watched it with my eyes because I froze. I was like, what the fuck is that? And I just saw it float by and that was it. And then um, the one that freaked me out the most was uh, that one. It, I mean, it freaked me out for a little bit, but I was just like, all right. I mean, I don't think it wanted to hurt me. So I didn't really, I mean, it freaked me out a little bit because I'd never seen it. But other than that, I was like, I didn't feel threatened by it or anything. So I was like, okay, cool. Maybe somebody's just passing through. Um, but then I was, I was sitting on the couch in the living room and my son had two remote control cars and one was in the kitchen and one was in the living room. And, uh, I hear this ring, 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 his remote control car was just driving in all different directions, like running into stuff, backing up, like driving around the kitchen. Like it would run into something, then it'd back up and then it'd run into something out just all over. And I was like, well, that's fucking weird. So I went and I turned it off um, thinking, okay, maybe the batteries are shorting out or whatever. I don't know. So I'm sitting there kind of weirded out by it, calming down, you know, it took about five minutes and then I was still sitting on the couch and then I put my foot down on the floor and his other remote control car drove onto my foot a second car like yeah. not the same one right mm -hmm. and this one wasn't on oh shit this one had the power turned off and that freaked me the fuck out because i was like something is trying to tell me something maybe or try to communicate with me somehow i'm not sure it was it was very odd though like one could have been explained away two within five minutes there was either some weird electrical interference going on but my phone was fine Right. It was just enough to control the car, the, the, the little remote control cars in the house. That one, that one was the weirdest one that freaked me out the most. Anyway, <laughs> other than that, I don't really have anything. Um, you know, I ignore the, I ignore the noises in the woods at night. If you hear your name in the woods at night, no, you didn't. Don't answer it. Don't fucking answer it. Uh, no, it's a Wendigo. They want to kill you. Um, <laughs> anyway and now lastly where can people find you online steak oh just on twitter I'm at steak and legs like eggs you know because I have chickens we didn't even talk about that we didn't even talk about the tiny farm at all I thought you were going to ask me about that um, yes at steak and legs 69 on twitter and that's it like I don't like I have a discord. I haven't checked it in weeks. Sorry, guys. Um, other than that, no, I don't really talk to people. So I text a few people. But. Yeah. And you That's guys can, and you guys can find me on Twitter at Hawkett Podcast. Everything related to me is always in my link tree. That's it for me. Thank you so much, Steak, for coming on the show today. <laughs>